Hi, everybody. My name is Roxana. I want to welcome you all to uh, to our amazing event this evening. I'm kind of curious. I'm, I'm Roxana. I'll be telling you more in a little bit, but I'm going to be moderating today with Brian Golden. And if you um, has, if you want to chat and uh, uh, have a little thing going on in the chat, I'm curious to know if by any chance anybody else has participated in any other events or is planning to participate in any of the other uh, weekend events coming up. That'd be fun to learn about. Um, we're going to just wait a few minutes to make sure that we get some folks who are coming in from other uh, events that are maybe bustling and, and a little running behind, so. Plus we never we know, never know if someone's getting caught, caught in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling over to the side of the road. Yeah, right. <laughs> to watch it on your phone. <laughs> Which I have seen before. Yes. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> um, just to answer your question, I know you said we could chat, but I didn't know okay. if you wanted us to chat in the feed or out loud or both. Oh, I love that. Well, I'll tell you what, if it's, it's funny because we've got a lot of technical things happening at once. So we don't necessarily know who's talking um, just because of the way the setup is right now. Um, so if you're comfortable in the beginning, we can start in the actual chat box and then later tour after the presentation and Brian has a chance to share mm -hmm. a lot of great ideas with you, we can open it up and it would be great to actually We'll see how it goes. We can have a live chat. We can all talk, put your camera on, that kind of a thing. But for now, okay, maybe awesome. we'll just, thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you. One thing I just wanted to say, other than hi, <laughs> I'm kind of listed as Brian Golden. So there are two of us, but I'm not the real Brian Golden. <laughs> oh, that's a riot. Paul, Paul, and, you can change you can change your name on there. Can I? Yeah, you can right click on, on the picture and rename. Let's see. It, it just says stop video, mute my audio, and hide self view. Maybe. Uh, um, actually, what, did you use the same link as Brian's link? You know, Brian had also sent me. I, I got one from Purchase, and I think I think I'm Brian on have, your private link somehow. I'm okay. going to have to change your name because then it might interfere with Brian's. Um, That's fine. Settings as well. Paul is fine. It's a good thing you did that because I got the link from Brian too. And Paul is my brother, and we would have had three Brian Goldens. <laughs> I would have <did> separately. <laughs> Which one of us would be worse? What is your name? It's Paul. I'm David Paul and David Osprey. I'm I'm okay. Paul. And the three of you us want, might well be brothers. We you want to put our last name as well? Um, that's fine. If you sure, that's fine. Uh, it's tough what? to spell, <laughs> but if you go by David's O E S T R E I C H E R. O E S T R E I C H E R. You got it. Wait a minute. Uh, I'm Golden fine. too. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, Is we could turn there into another a, Brian Golden? We could turn it into a game show at the end. I was, that's what I was doing. <laughs> it's like real, the real Brian Golden. Please stand up. <laughs> All right, I think we can start now. Right, excellent. Well, then I will take it away. My name is Roxana Lewis, and um, I am going to be moderating today's event, Dare to Live Without Limits, How to Unlock Your Mind uh, to Attract All That You Want with Brian Golden. Uh, to share a little bit about myself, I am a Purchase alum. I graduated in 90 from the dance department. I am now a writer, producer, director for film and television. I have a, my own production company, Roxy Dance Productions, because I had to seek that dance in there still. And I'm really, I'm also the co-chair of the Purchase Women's Leadership Network. In case any of you are interested in joining, it is for everyone and anyone. Uh, we are really excited to be here today um, with the Purchase Alumni Virtual Weekend. Thank you guys for coming out and sharing this time together, sharing the energy together, and being open to learn what Brian is going to offer. And then I think we're going to have a lot of fun 
tossing that around and um, throwing some ideas out there together. Uh, Brian Golden, for those of you who are not as familiar with him, uh, is the author of a wonderful book, Dare to Live Without Limits, which is truly, a, I love that title. And it is helping people to maximize their uh, potential in order to attain their dreams. And who doesn't want to do that? He is a nationally, he writes for a nationally syndicated newspaper since, uh, that's been published since 2002. And he is also a recognized self-development and motivational expert and speaker. His management consulting firm assists business and individuals in their development and growth. And Ryan is a member of the Purchase class of 1978. He earned his uh, bachelor's degree in environmental sciences. So we are really excited to launch this evening and much of the program with this energy um, that I think all of us can really use and bottle up <laughs> and <then> share <laughs> during this interesting time of history. So with that, Brian, I would, oh, I would like to give two bits of housekeeping before we get. Um, one is if you would be so kind, if you haven't yet, to just mute yourself while we're doing the mm. actual presentation. And while the uh, Brian is speaking, we can have you, thank you, Lilium, uh, a chat uh, going on and I will be watching that for questions. Um, if there's anything that we have to like, I have to know right now, right now, right now, I will absolutely just gently interrupt and hey, wait, Brian, let's, and otherwise we'll wait to the end and hopefully have everybody enjoy the conversation together. This is a lovely opportunity to get to know one another and enjoy this, the intimacy of being online together. So with that, Brian, I will say, have fun. Thank you, Roxanne. I want to thank everyone for, for attending tonight. It's, uh, um, I guess, the next best thing to being there live. So at least uh, I get to see a, a bunch of other uh, purchase, purchase people, which is always, always great. So I'm going to switch over now to um, share my PowerPoint. And uh, so that's me. I am the real Brian Golden. And I know there was a little confusion earlier. Uh, anyway, that's my website, daretolivewithoutlimits.com. It's a really cool website, and I'm not at all biased, but I have all kinds of stuff on there. There's links to my YouTube channel, um, Facebook page, my author's Facebook page. So I invite everyone to take a look at that um, at some point when, when we're done. Anyway, here's what my book looks like, and you can that can be gotten anywhere from any bookstore. So what we're going to focus on tonight is the essence of why do some people succeed while others fail? And this is something that's always fascinated me uh, ever, ever since I was actually in high school and college and we see some people do really well and other people struggle. And I was always fascinated by what is it that makes the difference? So what is the difference between success and failure? And it's actually amazingly only determined by one thing. A lot of people think it's, it's money, it's connection, it's education, but it's actually none of that. It's very, very fundamental. And it's the way you think, it's your attitude. So your thoughts, your attitude determines your behavior and your actions and the way you perceive the world. And that's what makes a difference between success and failure. So this is a great example of success. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, uh, Captain Sully Berger uh, landed the, uh, the jetliner on the Hudson River with uh, no, no serious injuries and unfortunately no fatalities, but he did something that actually had never been done before in the history of aviation, but yet he was able to pull it off. And we can contrast that with the example of the Costa Concordia, uh, which was around the same time and here we have a ship captain going about 15 miles an hour, and he decided to get too close to one of the islands and it had this uh, tragic result. So everybody has their own definition of success. And whatever your definition is, it's correct because it works for you. But there's only one definition of failure. So you fail only when you give up. And it doesn't matter how close you are to the finish line. 
almost doesn't count. As long as you're willing to get up and keep going, by definition, you will not fail. So remember people, it's your mindset. It's your mindset that will attract into life everything that you want, everything that you desire. So if you think you can, you are right. And this is another fascinating example and proof of that point. A few years back, Diana Nyad, when she was 64 years old, she swam from Cuba to Miami in 53 hours. That's nonstop people. She didn't stop and sleep at a hotel or climb out and sleep on a boat. She swam nonstop 53 hours, 110 miles in the ocean because that's the only way to get from Cuba to Miami. And she did it when she was 64 years old. Now, interestingly enough, that was not her first attempt. She had attempted it several times before, but she was so determined to do it, she was not gonna give up until she succeeded. Conversely, if you think you can't, you're also right. So there are lots of people that have lots going for them, but they say to themselves, they'll say to other people, you know, I don't think I can do it. And if that's their thoughts, no one will change the outcome. So your unique view of the world is what shapes your reality. And a small change in mental orientation will make a big difference to how you see things. So let's take a look at some examples because these will prove that your perception really is your reality. We've all seen this optical illusion. We have a gray bar and although the left side looks lighter than the right side, we've all seen that this bar is exactly the same color. If we remove the background, everything looks the same. Why is that? Because with the background in place, it's what we compare the bar to. So on the left side, we're comparing the bar to something darker, so that makes the bar appear lighter. On the right side, we're comparing it to a lighter area, so the bar appears darker. So we experience this phenomenon in many things in life. For example, if you're outside for two hours and it's zero degrees, and then you come inside and your house is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, that 60 degrees feels nice and comfortable. But if you're outside for two hours in 100 degree weather, and you come back to that same 60 degree temperature, now it feels cool. So how is it the 60 degrees can either be warm or it can be cold. It all depends on what you're comparing it to. Your perspective determines your reality. So what do we have here? Do we have really small people, a giant teacup, or is this a new ride at Disney? It's actually none of the above. Simply by putting the camera on the countertop, this gives us this interesting perspective. And the same thing occurs with these type of pictures where it looks like the fellow is really small and trying to get a, a drink of his soda. So what do we have here? Is this a trial run for the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Is it extreme home makeover gone bad? This is simply a picture that was cropped and rotated to give the illusion that something's going drastically wrong. So here's the original picture. This is a great carpet to put into a ballroom where we're gonna have an event with an open bar. And all you have to do is stay on the side, take out your cell phone and get some really interesting pictures. Imagine riding your motorcycle wanting to pass this truck. So you decide just to give them a little extra room and then right below behind this truck is this one. So we see really how our perspective affects how we perceive our environment. And for those of you that are afraid of heights, being at the top of a, uh, a tall building opening up the bathroom door and going in there could be a little disconcerting. So that leads us to fear. Fear is probably one of the great inhibitors. The things that we fear stop us dead in our tracks. So we're gonna take a look at fear and really how to overcome that. So is fear of failure learned or are we born with it? Let's take a look at an example, hopefully you can relate to. Do you remember what you went through when you learned how to walk? Well, I don't. I don't remember what I had for lunch. Anyway, if you're there, I'm, I'm jealous. Anyway, we've seen kids learning how to walk. 
So is this what happens? We take the, the infant, he or she, and they're looking at all the big people and they're watching for months. Then they finally say, I got it. I know what to do. So the kid stands up and just starts walking. Never happens that way, does it? Because as soon as the kid stands up, the kid falls down. Now, let me ask you this. Does the, does the infant say, well, you know what? I gave it my best shot. It's not for me. The other people that are walking, they're lucky. They knew somebody, they had a, they had a, a head start. No, the kid doesn't know any of that. So the kid just gets up again and falls again. And this process is repeated hundreds, if not thousands of times until one day the kid gets up and stands and is able to walk around. And do you know why we learn how to walk before we learn how to talk? It's so that we can't hear and understand all the people around us that are telling us that we can't do it. And to really be successful, we need to go back to that infant mentality when we stop listening to the naysayers and the critics. Another cool experiment was done with a fish tank. They took a fish tank, emptied it, and before they filled it, they divided it with a piece of plexiglass, filled the tank with water and put all a bunch of goldfish on one side. So goldfish, as they do, they swim around and they kept running into the plexiglass divider. So eventually the goldfish became conditioned to not try to get across that divider. And then guess what happened once the divider was removed? The goldfish still stayed on one side because they perceived that there was a barrier that they could not cross. And that's why my book is called Dare to Live Without Limits because the limits that we experience are invariably self-imposed. As the, another experiment was done, um, in a school district, they went into elementary school classes and they went into the classes where the, um, the students were learning challenged. And they took a bunch of students from different learning challenge classrooms at random and they put them all together into a new class. And they told the students that the reason that they were selected was that the aptitude test actually showed that they were of above average intelligence. And then a teacher was taken at random put into the class and the teacher was told that she's been given a class of gifted students. And you know how they performed? They performed much better than they would have if they thought that they were labeled learning challenged. So the way you think truly does determine your outcomes and your reality. So if you wanna change your life, you need to change your thinking. Let's take a look at some real life examples of how people were able to get exactly what they want and what challenges they had to overcome. Our first example is Bill Irwin. When he was 50 years old, he hiked the entire Appalachian Trail. And this runs from Georgia to Maine, and it's over 2000 miles. And people do this anywhere from six to eight to 12 months or more. Now that's a great accomplishment for someone who's 50 years old. It's actually a great accomplishment if you're 20 years old. What, what Bill had to overcome in order, in order to accomplish this is he's legally blind. So imagine that people, it's tough enough if you can see, but he still did it. And do you think Bill was told by people, don't do this, you can't do it. You're foolish, you can't see. How could you possibly accomplish this massive hike? So she's been in the news quite a bit, but usually not dressed like this. She's dressed in a racing outfit because this is Danica Patrick, only the fourth woman Indy race car driver and the first female to lead an Indy 500 race. Now this is in a male dominated sport. So when she was growing up, she probably received no encouragement to go into professional race car driving and probably also lots of derision and discouragement. This is a father and son team. Dick is the father, Rick is the son, and together they've done over a thousand races, including 252 triathlons, 70 marathons, 95 half marathons, and they started all this back in 1979. And they were popular participants, they were regular participants in the Ironman uh, race out in Hawaii. And this race consists, it starts with a two and a half mile ocean swim. 
which is followed by a 112 mile bicycle race. And then you get to cap it all off with a full 26 mile marathon. And you only have 17 hours to do it. Now, I think if you could just complete this, it's a lifetime accomplishment, but look at all the races they were able to do. Now, they also had a challenge they had to overcome. And that's the fact that Rick was born with cerebral palsy and he's confined to a wheelchair. So what did they do? So Dick took his son on the ocean swim by pulling him in a rubber raft behind him, two and a half miles in the ocean. All right, so what do they do for the bicycle race? Well, they came prepared, 112 miles. And then the marathon, they're ready for that also. Now, amazingly, not only did they complete every race they entered, they didn't come in last. Not that there would have been anything wrong if they did. So this is an amazing example of what mindset and persistence can accomplish. Unfortunately, Dick, the father just passed away recently uh, at 80 years old, but he left a legacy that will probably be untouched forever. And this fellow is Baha'i Singh and he's completed over eight marathons. Remember a marathon people is 26 miles and that's a great accomplishment at any age, but he completed his last one when he was hundred years old. Now, do you think he gets up in the morning and says, wow, I feel like I'm getting old. I assure you he does not. And then when he turned 101, he actually retired from running and he didn't start till he was in his late eighties. And then also running with him, we have Jenny Wood Allen, who at age 90 became the oldest woman to finish the London Marathon. But she had a real edge. You know what that was? Look how young she is. She had age on her side. She's only 90. And we've all studied her in school, but when I've given this talk, I'm amazed at how many people don't recognize her. But this is Helen Keller. So not only did she graduate college being deaf and blind, but look when she did it, 1904. And I'm sure she was probably the only woman in the class graduating at that time. So what I tell my students uh, when, when I'm teaching classes, if you think college is tough, imagine trying to do it with your ears plugged and your eyes closed. Actually, sometimes I think the students are already there. Then we have Tyrone Muggsy Bogues. He was an NBA player. And he played for 14 years. You have to be really good to last 14 years and as a top level athlete. And he played for five different teams. But something made Muggsy unique uh, in, the in the basketball leagues. And that is at five foot three inches tall, he was the shortest NBA player. But Muggsy did not consider this a limitation. He figured it gave him a real edge because it allowed him to go where they couldn't reach him. And to put this in perspective, his height, here he is standing next to one of his teammates who's seven foot, seven inches tall. So look at what mindset can do. And this is Dara Torres. She won 12 Olympic medals, competed in five consecutive Olympics. And when she was 41 years old, she became the oldest female swimmer in Olympic history. Because many, many Olympic athletes start out in their teens early early to late teens. I wanna share with you a very powerful principle. It's called the principle of the slight edge. And if this is all you know about success, this can get you an amazing results. So here's the definition. A small amount of extra effort produces results far in excess of the effort required. And let's take a look at an example. In a horse race, let's say the Kentucky Derby, we've got something called a photo finish. And that is where the race is so close, they literally have to look at a, a photograph that's taken when they cross the finish line. And that's where we get the term winning by a nose. But what's the difference in value for the horse that comes in first in the Kentucky Derby compared to the one that comes in second? It could be hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in value difference between first and second place. So once again, the principle of the slight edge, a small amount of extra effort produces results far in excess of the effort required. And you've all heard the maxim, go the extra mile. 
It's actually a lie. Go the extra fraction of an inch. It doesn't take an extra mile to achieve amazing, outstanding results. So now what I'd like to do is take you through the 10 principles of success. So principle one, you are what you think about. And what you think about is called self-talk. And you have to be very cognizant and aware of what you say uh, to yourself. Because some people say horrendous things to themselves. They put themselves down. They tell themselves they're no good. They say to themselves they won't want to accomplish anything worthwhile. They will actually say things to themselves that if anybody else said it to them, they would probably sue them for slander and, and character, uh, malicious character ruination. So be very aware of what you're saying to yourself. Make sure that you're boosting yourself with positive thoughts and not tearing yourself down. Visualization is so powerful. Visualization is what you imagine in your mind, which will affect what actually happens. So if we take a look at top athletes, all top athletes visualize themselves winning. They don't visualize themselves losing, losing or falling or tripping. So you wanna visualize what you're going to accomplish, not what you're not going to accomplish. Set goals. Why are goals so important? Because if you don't know where you wanna go, how are you gonna get there? It's just that simple. Everybody winds up somewhere, but those people with goals are very focused and they have much more chance of accomplishing exactly what they want than people that just drift aimlessly. How do you attain your goals? Having goals are great, but then you have to attain them. So once you've defined your goals, next you have to break each goal down into the necessary steps required in order to attain it. Then you must take the first step and the next step, and don't stop. Because people without action, nothing happens. And don't wait, don't procrastinate, get started today. Because all you have is today. Unfortunately, too many people allow their past to pollute their future. They look at what that, what's happened in the past and they lament it. They fret over what they could have, should have, or would have done differently if they only had a chance to do it over. Well, you don't have any do-overs, but the good news is that you can learn from the past and then go forward more intelligently to make sure that you've learned from everything that you've experienced. But what about the future? Do you know that a lot of people worry about the future? But how effective is worry? Worry is like being in a rocking chair. It's a lot of activities that doesn't, or excuse me, it's a lot of activity that doesn't get you anywhere. So instead of worrying, take action. If you're worried about the future, replace that with being concerned for the future, prepare for the future, and then take action so you wind up where you want to be. Never, ever give up. Because if you give up, that's the only thing that guarantees failure. And we have a couple of examples that we can take a look at. Thomas Edison, in his quest for a commercially viable light bulb, it took him 10,000 tries. Now, I consider myself pretty motivated. But to be honest, if something doesn't work twice, I get kind of frustrated. But he kept plugging along. And when he was asked by a reporter how it, how it felt to, feel, to fail, 9,999 times, he replied, he hasn't failed at all. He has discovered 9,999 ways a light bulb won't work. And each time the light bulb didn't work, he did not do the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result because that is the quintessential definition of failure. Each time he made a slight change, the amount of electricity, what he uses as a filament, the type of glass, the gas that he put into the bulb. And then we have another big failure, Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth, although he's known for having the record number of um, home runs, Babe Ruth also had a record number of strikeouts. But Babe Ruth obviously is not known as a failure. And his secret to success was literally that he just kept on swinging. 
So unfortunately, many people give up and they're just around the corner from success, but other people never quit. So I'm gonna throw some examples up here for you and see if you can guess who these companies or people are and were. In its first year in business, only 400 of their products were sold. Now this is a company that started in the late 1800s and the company is Coca-Cola, 1892. So let's figure that each one of their Cokes sold for 10 cents. They had gross sales for the year of $40. Now that's a manufacturing company, a sales, distribution, marketing, $40. And yet this turned into one of the largest multinational corporations in the world. Their creation was turned down by both Hewlett Packard and Atari, but they had first year sales of two and a half million dollars when they went out on their own. And this is none other than Apple Computer starting by the, started by the two Steves, Steve uh, Jobs on the right, Steve Wozniak on the left. Now you might say, why would Hewlett Packard and Atari turn down their groundbreaking invention that was the start of a technological revolution that nobody could predict in terms of just the trillions and gazillions of dollars in wealth that it would create. Because let me show you what their first prototype Apple computer looked like. And I guess it's, it's lucky for them that Euler Pack and Atari just didn't see it. Because if they had bought this computer from them, even if they paid them, let's say back then, this is in the early 70s, $500,000, they probably would have thought that was a lot of money because it was back then, still is today. And who knows if they would have gone out on their own. So sometimes you think that you've missed the boat, a door slammed in your face. You're very disappointed because you feel that an opportunity was taken away from you. So just think about the two Steves. If this opportunity had not, taken away, had not been taken away from them, they wouldn't have started their own company. And another interesting uh, tidbit, a little bit of trivia for you, there was actually a third person involved with the startup of Apple, and his name was Ronald Wayne. Now, the two Steves were really technical, but they weren't business people. So they had a friend of theirs, Ronald Wayne, and uh, they said to Ronald, well, we can't pay you anything because look what they had. That was their product. But what we'll do is we'll give you 10% of our company, which was a, a plywood box, if you'll come and work with us on the business end. So Ronald at the time didn't really have a lot going on. So I said, sure, I'll, I'll give it a go. So we worked with him for about a year, ran into some financial problems, and he sold back his 10% share in Apple for about 800 bucks. If he had kept his 10% share, people, his, the value of what that was worth today is probably upwards of 60 billion with a B. Now we all make mistakes in life, but hopefully we don't do it on that order of magnitude. In his first year in business, he went bankrupt. Two years later, his second company failed, but his third corporation has done and is doing well to this day. And let's see who this well-known failure is, none other than Henry Ford. Now, imagine wanting to start a business and you go bankrupt. What do all your friends and family say? All right, you gave it a go, try something else. So he does it again, also fails. Now at that point, he does not have a lot of a big, very big fan base. But fortunately, he understood the concept of never, give, never ever giving up and look what he was able to create. His first children's book was rejected by 23 publishers, but the 24th publisher sold 6 million copies of it. And this is none other than Dr. Seuss, whose real name was Theodore Geisel. Now imagine being one of the publishers that turned down Dr. Seuss. Could you say that's a real resume builder? He was even more of a loser than, than uh, Ford because he went broke with his first three dry goods stores. And this is none other than R.H. Macy. So he's a little bit slower learner than Ford. Ford only went bankrupt twice. She spent six years writing her first novel. She was rejected by nine publishers before a London publisher signed her. Then the day she signed the contract, the skeptical publishing agent told her she wouldn't really make any money selling children's books. And she also proved them wrong. Now, if you think it was a, a big resume enhancement turned down Dr. Seuss, how do you think the nine publishers that turned her down felt? They certainly messed up, missed out in some income as well. 
He started as a failure. The first record label he started went bankrupt. He started a second label, which also went bankrupt. Deep in debt, he was forced to move back with his parents when he was 30 years old, but he went on to create a TV show, which is doing well to this day. And that is none other than Simon Cowell and American Idol is just one of his many shows. Principle six, education never ends. So if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Because sometimes people are, are hesitant to spend the time or the money that it takes to gain an education. So who should you take advice from? And I'm always amazed that people will take advice from people that they should never be listening to. The person you should go to for advice is that person who is where you want to be. They've already accomplished it. Go and pick their brain. And if you don't know them personally, read biographies about them. Look, look at movies that are made about them. Read things that they write. And then that being said, you can learn from everyone. You can learn from people's successes and you can learn from people's failures. And we've all heard the maximum that experience is the best teacher. Actually, people, that's a lie. Somebody else's experience is a better teacher because it will save you lots of time, money, and effort. And people, part of being intelligent is taking what you learn and applying it. Because if you know something but don't use it, it's just like not knowing it at all. Principle seven, control your emotions. This is so important. Negative emotions are poisons, literally. Anger, resentment, and bitterness are devastating to you. They harm you emotionally, they harm you physically, and they harm you mentally. Now, there are gonna be things that really upset you. Life very often isn't fair, but don't internalize it. Don't say, you know, I'm so upset my stomach hurts, or I, I, this is gonna give me an ulcer. Because people, remember that self-talk, the way you program your brain determines your outcome. Principle eight, guard your time. Don't waste time. As we all know, every year it goes by faster and faster. And I remember being a kid, my parents told me they couldn't believe how fast I was growing up. I was probably four. And I'm thinking, you're kidding me. The year drags by interminably, especially the school year. Little did, I, did we all know how right our parents were. And remember people, life isn't a practice run. Don't put stuff off. The time goes by way too fast. Reach out there, grab for what you want. You've got to leave your comfort zone and limit the negative. Unfortunately, the world is filled with all kinds of negative input. All right, real life, the news, everything that happens around us. So choose what you expose yourself to in terms of input. And you're doing that right now. So the way you recharge is with positive input. Talk to positive people, read positive things. You could even read my book. I kind of like it myself. And avoid burnout, right? How many of you have ever tried to set up a to-do list and your to-do list gets longer rather than shorter? And you're putting stuff on there faster than you can get it done. Simplify your to-do list. And I'll give you a hint. And this is used by some of the most highly productive people in the world. Put down each day simply the three most important things that you have to get done. And then number them, one, two, and three. Then cross off two and three. What are you left with? You're left with the one most important thing that you've got to do. And why is this so effective? Because how many of you have done what I've done? And as you go through the day, you've gotten some stuff done, maybe you haven't, but the thing that was most important, you ignored. And learn to just say no to those things that are discretionary activities that you don't want to be involved in. But you have to do it without using the word no. How many of you have ever been invited to a family get together that you just didn't want to go to? And if they say, are you coming next Sunday? And you said, no, what's the typical response? Why not? So when they ask you, are you coming next Sunday? Here's what you say. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. It sounds like it's going to be a great time. You know, it's going to be so much fun. I'd love to come. Unfortunately, I've got a prior commitment and you never use the word no. And if they say, why can't you go? You say, because I have a prior commitment. And you keep saying that until they leave you alone. 
Principle number nine, have an attitude of gratitude. We all can wake up feeling a little bit off, especially during the last year and a half with everything we've got to deal with and, and all of the lack of good news that we experience each day. An attitude of gratitude is putting together a list of at least 10 things that you're grateful for in your life. And we all have a lot more than 10. But when we're thankful for what we have, we always feel that we have more than we need. And conversely, people who always want more never feel they have enough. So when I'm feeling off, I always think about, okay, what today is going to be a good day. And why is it going to be a good day? Because I woke up. Because some people don't. So just the fact that you wake up in the morning means that you now have the potential to do whatever you want because it's a brand new day. Principle number 10, what you project, you receive. You literally are a magnet. The reason that I'm making such a big emphasis, putting such a big emphasis on your self-talk because your self-talk programs your thoughts. Only think about what you want to attract. Imagine going into a meeting saying, oh, this meeting is gonna be terrible. These always work out that way. You attract literally the outcome that you don't want. And always put it into positive terms. So don't wake up saying, oh, today's gonna to be a great day because I'm not gonna get hit by a bus. Well, nobody wants to do that. We say, today's gonna to be a great day because I'm gonna be working on my goals. I'm gonna be pursuing my dreams and I'm gonna start really making progress on where I wanna be. Now you always have to be kind and considerate and treat everyone with respect, especially the people that don't treat you with respect. Now, this doesn't mean that you're a doormat. The, what it does mean is that you don't respond in kind. How many of you have ever gotten into a shouting match, an argument with someone? It just never works. So you always have to be polite, considerate. All right, treat everybody with respect, people. As tough as it is to do sometimes, it's well worth it because you will never regret something that you've said or written to someone. So remember people, whatever you can conceive and believe, you can achieve. That's the essence of what we're talking about tonight, programming your mind to attract exactly what you want. How many of you have been met with this phrase? Oh, you can't do that, it's impossible. I'll tell you, especially when I was in purchase, this motivated me to no end. Because when somebody told me I couldn't do something, I was hell bent to prove them wrong. Because let me show you the real definition of impossible. When you hear that word, you should be happy because it means you're not gonna have a lot of competition. The word impossible means, it means possible. So when something's impossible, that's what I wanna work toward. And let's look at two examples. One is Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager, Yeager was the first person to fly faster than the speed of sound. And this happened back in 1947. And do you know that before Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier, uh, physicists thought it was physically impossible that you could not fly faster than the speed of sound because no man-made object would hold up. And even if the plane got that fast, it would literally just dis disintegrate in midair. And as soon as Chuck Yeager proved them wrong, guess what? Everybody started breaking the sound barrier. And then just a little bit after Chuck Yeager, another person broke a, a record that was thought to be unachievable. And that is that Roger Bannister, a runner, was able to break the four minute mile. And before he did it, it was thought to be physically impossible. Human beings could not run a mile in less than four minutes. And now it's done all the time. So as soon as somebody proves that something is possible, then it opens the floodgates and look what happens. And another thing, just talk about flying. If you take a look at the, the Wright brothers' first flight and us landing on the moon in 1969, we went from not being able to fly to getting to the moon in 65 years. And if you look at it in that perspective, I think that's just an amazingly awesome accomplishment because from the dawn of time, whenever that was, up until the Wright brothers, everybody was running. Right, or taking a train or driving. 
It just wasn't possible. As soon as they proved it was possible, 65 years later, we were on the moon. So go ahead and do it, people. Develop and cultivate your own winning mindset. Remember, you can attract all you want. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you can do it. And then you can go out and be one of those people that does something that other people thought was impossible. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your being here. So I'm going to stop the slideshow, and then we're going to go to discussion, question, answers, uh, any way that our Roxanne is going to take over now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brian. That was just a very powerful um, presentation of a lot of really inspiring um, individuals and a lot of uh, actions that they took. I think what I'd like to do is ask if um, if we if people have questions, I know one came from Stash, just a sort of a, a, a little bit of a housekeeping question in a way. Do you, are you by chance making your PDF available or what recommendations do you have for people who are inspired by what they saw and would like more? Oh, great. If you go to my website, just dare to live without limits.com. I've got all kinds of minty cool stuff posted there. There's also links to my uh, YouTube channel and I've got all kinds of motivational videos and also on my, um, my author's Facebook page, there's a link there as well. And you'll see all kinds of material videos, other things that I've written. So there's lots of, lots of stuff out there for you to avail yourself. And I, I think that this presentation is recorded and I'm not sure uh, how it's, if it's gonna be made available, um, but uh, I don't know if you know Roxana or- And it will be on YouTube. Okay, so it will be on YouTube. So who knows, I could be the ne next great YouTube influencer <laughs> without a gimmick, <laughs> without a trick I, uh, Um, I think I, I would like to spark uh, a question. I'm gonna use myself as a guinea pig first. It was really interesting watching and listening to everything. First, does anybody else have any other questions that are just like you have to ask right here, right now before I start brainstorming? Does anybody, I think what I'd like to know, what struck you in this presentation? Was there something specific that really landed with you today? And I will throw myself down first and say, one thing that really struck me when I was looking at one of those images was when you were talking about the, um, the race horses, and I have to apologize to Michelle because she really thoughtfully said, Roxana, what was that definition you just said? And I said, I'm so sorry, I was engrossed in thinking. And I, you know, um, but I, what I noticed was that the jockey's heads were down. And although they were reaching by their nose, the horses were going to the, to the race line with their nose, the jockeys were just so in unison with their intentions and with the drive and the power of this connection with this magnificent, I'll call it a beast in the most loving way. Um, and that is something that kind of surprised me that I thought about as I was, as I was listening to you, I went, wow, the jockey's heads are completely down riding it. It made me think of, um, you know, with all of this work there's for, for la for, for better, for worse. I mean, it's for me, it struck me as a little bit of faith, like no practice what you're doing. Right. He's so in sync. And, and so I, that was something that really struck me as I was watching that and then, and then let it go and, and, and let it tr trust where it takes you. Cause you know, exactly. Diligently. And, and they're so dedicated. They become one with their quest Yeah. and it becomes, it becomes part of them. So when they're on the horse, then they're, as you observed, they're part of the horse. It's one unit. It's not a horse with a rider on it. And the people that are that accomplish the things that they want to do, that becomes part of who they are. They want to do it because it's what they have to do. And also the definition of the principle of the slight edge, a small amount of extra effort produces results far in excess of the effort required. So a small amount of extra effort produces results far in excess of the effort required. Excellent. And do you have, as we're looking at these, um, these big giant ideas, um, which have so many important kind of small components, one thing that strikes me is the ability to, how do you look at building that creating those building blocks so that sometimes it can feel really, you know, overwhelming to go, 
I'm going to think big thoughts. I'm going to think positively, or I'm going to take, you know, what are some suggestions you have right now? Or what are the techniques I think you, you said somewhere in there to squeeze out of, to squeeze the most out of each day. So well, exactly. A goal can be overwhelming, right? And if you take a look at the buildings of purchase, they're all brick buildings. It was what you so fondly remember, but every one of those buildings was brick, built one brick at a time. And the, guy, the people that built them, they never brought over 10,000 bricks and put them into place. So think of breaking down your goals into small manageable steps. And even going through college, we did that. We did one class at a time, one day at a time. We did you know, one assignment at a time. So don't overwhelm yourself. Don't look at the end result and say, wow, that's so far for me to go. Remember people, every journey, no, no matter how long, starts with the first step. So if you simply take one step at a time, the accomplishments that you'll attain will be truly amazing. And what are some of the, um, I think folks really, this is a time where for many of us, um, fear is a big part of this, this unknown chapter. And how do you, what are some recommendations you have about really, um, getting in touch with that and managing fear or using it or working with it? Well, a great, a great definition of fear using fear as an acronym is it's false evidence appearing real. All right, it's false evidence appearing real. And when we think that we can't accomplish something and I'll tell you, you know, um, when, when I was in high school, I had stage fright so badly that the thought of doing what I do now wasn't even in the realm of possibilities. There was a better chance of me becoming an astronaut, and I don't like heights, than there would have been in terms of doing public speaking. So whatever it is you're afraid of, and I don't have anything special going for me in, in terms of natural ability to speak, but I was determined to overcome it. So whatever fears you're facing, go where you're afraid to go, do what you're afraid to do. And that's how you overcome fear. You do it one step at a time. And usually what happens is we create these mental monsters where their fear gets so large that it's just so overwhelming. We say, there's no way I can do that. So remember, whatever it is you're afraid of, it can be overcome. And you don't have to allow the false evidence appearing real to limit your life. Do you have um, sayings that you, or mantras, or like what are the touchstones that you give yourself in, in um, in changing your mindset? What are the things you do? What are, what are three things that you might, or two things or one thing? Like what's, what's one touchstone for people to really take away and remember if there's one thing, one sentence that you can give them to use every single day, a morning thing and a night thing? Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you three that, uh, that I use. First thing is I can do this. Second thing is I will do this. And the third thing is I'm starting now. So I can do this, I will do this, and I'm starting now. And also one, one of the things that I'm, I'm against is giving something a try. Because when we, if we give something a try and it doesn't work, how do we cover ourselves? But at least I tried. The way you accomplish things is by doing it, by setting, setting your mind that this is what I want to accomplish. Now, this doesn't mean that everything that you attempt is gonna work as planned, just as Thomas Edison proved. But what he also proved is if it doesn't work as planned, we're gonna make an adjustment, we're gonna continue going forward. So it's the willpower, not try power. And on that note, how important is it um, to surround yourself with people who uh, support you in your goals? And what, what about people who are naysayers? It's, first of all, ignore the naysayers. Because if you listen to them, you won't get anything done. You need to connect with other people that share your, your, your level of ambition, that share your goals. Unfortunately, there are way too many negative people out there. So we've got to connect with those people that will recharge us. Remember, we've all experienced the world at large has a lot more negativity than we would like. And the way we kind of uh, vaccinate ourselves against that negativity is by a positive boost. So it's those positive infusions that keep us going. And I experienced it also. And I'll find myself sometimes getting, you know, dragged out, bummed out. And one of the ways that I motivate myself is through my writing, through my talking, through just, you know, reviewing my, my list, my attitude of gratitude. So it's perfectly normal to go through emotional swings and cycles. 
but you can push yourself through it. You don't have to stay there. And another great thing that I heard, I forget where I heard it, is that if you're going through hell, keep going and don't stop. <laughs> All right. So whatever you're dealing, whatever challenges you've got, you can be successful. Other people have done it. And we've seen so many, just a few examples of awesome accomplishments of things that before I told you what they were able to do, would have seen undoable that no, you can't do that. Um, what uh, I'd like to open up is there are there any questions that anybody else or comments or thoughts that anybody else has because I sure don't want to monopolize if anybody would like to, uh, to join in and ask a question, please feel free. I'm, I'm curious, Brian, and uh, when you first started writing the book and or doing your work of uncovering what, you know, what the forces were to make people successful. Uh, did you go through actually interviewing people who were successful and, and doing some kind of fact finding about what they did, who they were, what their lives were about, what, what you know, other than having, a, you know, some of the principles you've already outlined? Uh, that, that, that's a great question. So what happened was I, I was finding out when I was when I was younger, that I was able to pull stuff off that people said I, I shouldn't be able to do. And then I started finding that there's actually a whole basis for this. And I started reading a lot of, a lot of different authors, um, uh, Og Mandino, Napoleon Hill, Zig Ziglar. Uh, there were just dozens of authors. I, just, I was just reading whatever they were writing about. I said, well, there's, this is really something. It's not, it's not just hit or miss. And I became really fascinated by it. And I would I would always look for in newspapers or, or, or examples of biographies that would detail what people were able to accomplish. And, uh, and that just fascinated me. And so when I started writing, I actually didn't decide to write a book. I started off by deciding to write one column. That's how I started, just with the first column. So let me see what happens. Because when I was in school, two things I didn't like doing. I didn't like writing and I didn't like speaking in front of people. So I had to come overcome both of those. And, uh, and as, as I've done, it proves it's doable. And again, there's not, not, nothing makes me special. I don't have any special gifts. I was just hell bent and determined uh, to follow this path and, and accomplish this. So I can, I can say without any hesitation that if I can do this, any of you can pursue and accomplish your goals. And what makes some of the people unique that we talked about tonight is not so much their, uh, is not their ability and it's not what they had going for them. It's a fact that they never gave up. And that's what's the difference between success and failure. Um, Brian, I'd like to ask you, we have Lisa who asked a question. I'm gonna paraphrase it a bit. And one of those things is, um, do you find that the more positive you live your life, the more you go in another direction of the, the goals that you want to achieve, do you find or have you experienced uh, a time where there's more negativity from the people around you um, uh, in contrast to, uh, to your, to your ac new actions, your new mindset? And, and, um, and how do you deal with that? Sort well, of an, the, the a negativity pack. Well, the, the positive approach, the positive mindset, or the positive expectation absolutely works every time it's tried. It doesn't guarantee that everything that you try will work out exactly as planned, but it works a lot better than if you don't do it. And I found it, so when I, I run into people, we all do, who are negative, who give you a hard time, who are challenging. And when I run into that situation, I look at that as a chance to learn and grow. So now I say, I'm going to dig deep. And I'm gonna find a way to be successful in my interaction with this person to accomplish what I need to accomplish. So instead of saying, oh no, I hate this. I'll look, okay, now I get a chance to practice. And again, it's that slight shift in perception that changes the reality. And I find that when, as, as we, all, we all get caught up when somebody does something that we don't like, we get all annoyed, we can't let it go. We're just upset, we don't know what to do. And when you can learn to let go of that and release it, it's such a feeling of freedom and, and joy that you don't have to get caught up in what other people do. That's wonderful. Yes, please, uh, David, please join us. Oh, you're not, uh, you're still muted. Yeah, put your microphone on. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're good. Great, great. No, I just want to say, um, 
Brian and I go back to probably when I was about nine years old, but we really became friends when we were teenagers. And, and I was a lowly freshman and you were a senior and purchased together. And we had so many great times. And this is one of the most extraordinary people you will ever meet. He never gives up. He's amazing. He's inspiring. He is the absolute um, quintessential um, embodiment of, of friendship. He'd walk 10,000 miles per friend in his bare feet. And uh, not that I recommend that, you're probably better off driving, but <laughs> he would really, <laughs> that's the kind of person he is. And he's always been so inspiring. That's never stopped. But Brian, I'm glad we didn't get to try everything we wanted to do. <laughs> I remember once <laughs> when I, you were 17 and I was 15, we went on a trip down the uh, Housatonic with uh, one other guy from Purchase and, and uh, uh, I think it might've been your cousin. And uh, sure enough, you and I, we're on the same side here, but boy, what an argument we got into everyone. We want to go straight ahead uh, under Bulls Bridge and that's like Niagara Falls, except straight <laughs> ahead in the canoes. And, and probably at that point in life, it's a good thing we didn't try absolutely everything. Um, but you know, that's the difference between being a teenager. You keep the dreams and you, you learn some of the terrain around you and, uh, and you shoot for the stars. And that's something, Brian, that you, you've always done. And I think you're probably not sorry we didn't run Bill's, Bull's Bridge either, or, or are you? No, I don't know. No, that's why we're sitting here today, David, since we did <laughs> use some discretion there. <laughs> um, thank you, David. Brian, I actually have a, a question for you. Um, if I may. Of course. Okay, I, I'm considering, I don't know if you call it a career change, but another path. And um, I've been running, you know, I, I, I would really, I've always loved to write music and I never really pursued it. And so I've just been doing this on my own, but I'm working in a style that's a few hundred years past. So we're talking about the, the classical era generally, Haydn and Mozart, that period. And I read so many things. I don't know how they find me. You open one website and everybody sends you these letters and things. And, and on one of them, people write in questions and they get answers. And this issue of of people writing in older styles has comes up so often. And there is a large, a fair amount of, of responders who will say you're that, and I, it's almost an exact quote. I have a file with some of these things in them. And they say, you know, if you wanna be considered, if you wanna write good music, you have to do what's being written today. You, you really, um, if you're not considering what's being done con in contemporary it, on, on these times, you're not in it, then right, right. You're, you're really not in it. And it's so difficult. No, that's a, great, that's a great point, it's Paul. It's so hard in the arts to get yeah. anywhere to start with. It, it's, actually, it's actually anything, Paul. And one of the things that successful people have done is they ignore the so-called conventional wisdom. And you have to remember that no matter how specialized you think that your field is or what your niche is, there's more than enough people that are interested in it. Hmm. And, and you, you have to go to find the people that are doing what you wanna do. And there are those people and they will offer you encouragement. And I can't tell you how many stories I've read where people were discouraged from doing what they did and they went on to massive amounts of success. And every one of them to a person says, I'm so glad I, I ignored the naysayers hmm. and the people that told me that what I wanna do is not possible. So if that's something you want to do, Paul, just go for it. Just go. The people are telling you you can't do it. Don't listen to them because they have nothing to offer you. Thank I'd you. Like to ask it's so question. hard to know. You know, you wonder, are they right? And who, who gave them, I mean, how, who gave right, them the authority right. to speak that way? Some of them have doctorates, some of them don't. And, I'm, and you're all there by yourself. Well, you're not by yourself, Paul. And remember, every, every example we had, they blazed their own path. They did things that were never done before. So it doesn't matter if you're the pioneer. I'd like to 
to kind of piggyback on that, Stash was asking a question, um, he, and I'd like to highlight, because I think you addressed a little bit of this, talking about staying um, focused during difficult times when everyone doesn't believe in you, um, or uh, maybe it's a location somebody lives in. So I think at the crux of this is, how do we stay so motivated and focused so that like right now there's this amazing energy and I'm thinking most of us are feeling like this sense of, okay, let's go, let's go, let's do it. And so how do you encourage, what do you suggest to be able to maintain that motivation when the room quiets? Well, look at the way that a ship floats and imagine the ocean being a sea of neg negativity and all the ship does in order to be able to float is it just doesn't let any water in. And that's how we're able to deal no matter what we encounter, because we can be sealed so the negativity does not leak in. And even if it does leak in, because it's, it's human to have that happen. When you catch yourself feeling depressed or bummed out or disheartened, what you do is you get yourself back on track. And you say, no, I'm not gonna get dragged down this road. I'm not gonna let this person drag me down. I'm not gonna let this person discourage me. And so you keep bringing yourself back. It's an awareness. And the more you do it, the more it becomes an automatic reflex. It's just like with a tennis player. A tennis player, when you're first learning how to play tennis, you're thinking about where do I have to run? Where do I step? Where do I swing the racket? And then when you look at a tennis professional, they're not, it's just automatic. And it becomes automatic through practice. And look at challenging situations as an opportunity to practice. That's how you get really good. And when you're on the road to success, you will encounter obstacles. You're gonna encounter problems. And successful people are not people that avoid problems. They're people that become really good at solving problems. Because as people get successful, some of the problems they have to, they have to solve are massive. And, uh, and so if they can do it, you can do it too. That's wonderful. And I'm gonna, uh, um, that makes me think of, there's an important part when you were using the metaphor of the water going in a boat. I mean, I guess it kind of depends on the boat also. Some, some boats are equipped to let the water come in and the water go out too. Well, <laughs> in they, certain areas, and the drains. They always, and, they, that's a great, great point because the, the boats always have a bilge pump. Yeah. And the reason they have a bilge pump because invariably water gets in. And if they don't get it right back out, they quickly become submarines. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and uh, I, I was thinking about the motivation. Um, oh gosh, I think um, Stash, if you're there, did yeah, did I answer? Do you have any other question that you'd like to uh, that you'd like to ask? Or did I cover things for you there? I think I think uh, I think we're good. Okay. Um, there we go. All right. So I think, is there anybody else who has any ideas or questions that they'd like to share? Oh, please. Yes. Liam. Liam. Am I saying Lilam? Lilam. You're going to have to correct me now. <laughs> Hi. Um, my name is Lilam. And Lilium. I just want to thank SUNY Purchase and Brian to do this presentation because I was born here and my family came from Cuba and I grew up as a learning disabled child. I grew up by being turned down by a lot of people saying, you're never going to make it. You're never going to graduate from college. My first grade teacher called me retarded. And I proved them all wrong because I graduated from high school. I graduated from college. I even graduated from grad school with a master's. And now I have a level three teacher assistant certification teaching students that have special needs ages 5 to 21 and I'm really glad that this presentation came on because it's something that we all need and it's something that we all need to be taught and I think this is a good lesson for, for my me and my teacher to teach these kids because you should never stop learning and you should never let people tell you no I worked at a daycare and my director wanted me to change my character. She wanted me to change who I am. And I'm like, no, I am who I am. Don't tell me who, to, who you want me to be. You know, so you know, I that, thank you for, for that. And 
my quote for high school was special people also have dreams of their own future. So muchas gracias and thank you. You know, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that because you embody everything I've talked about today. You prove that it works because you've done it. And it's amazing what you can pull off as you're experiencing, because you can do things that people said you couldn't do, but you did them anyway. And you're, you're an inspiration to all of us here as well, because I love examples of people that take, the, take these concepts and they incorporate it into their lives in order to do things that people told them were impossible. So I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that, that that's terrific. And congratulations, congratulations. Um, and I also, I'm sorry, and also for my senior project for SUNY Purchase, I wrote, produced, directed, and acted in my one, my one act play. It was two stories. See, so it's perfect. You, that's great because you're you're living without limits, and look 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 what it does, and that that's incredible. Congratulations, fantastic. I wanted to chime in if that's okay. Of course. Um, first of all, that's amazing, Lilium. Uh, that's amazing. Um, and I also just wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to chime in that um, one of the things I found the most valuable for me tonight, just to give that feedback, was I really appreciated all of the human examples that you gave us. Um, but, you know, we, it's very often that we hear about people's successes, right? That's sort of like the norm. Um, but I really appreciated that you not only shared those successes with us, but the failures that were behind um, the success, you know, the failures they went through before they achieved those goals, because, um, I'm a pretty focused person. I'm a pretty goal oriented person, but I've had a lot of, uh, very serious trauma. Um, and it just seems to be one trauma after another. And it, it started actually my last year at purchase with my father passing. And it's just been like one after another, every two to three years since then. Um, so I feel like my, my natural determination, I work really hard for goals and to get my positive mindset back and then a trauma will occur. And then I kind of lose everything I worked for. And so sometimes, and I know this is not a rational thought, but I'm going to say this just in case people participating tonight can relate to this. It kind of makes me feel like the universe is saying like, stop trying, stop fighting so hard, stop trying. Um, so I really related tonight to the sort of hardships that you discussed and it made me feel like it's not the universe saying like, stop fighting. It's just, you know, building you up for that great success. So thank you for that part. Well, thank you. That, that's a, that's a great point. And I, I appreciate the feedback. Thank you so much. Um, I am curious and maybe we'll, we'll, unless anybody else has something they'd like to offer, I think I will um, ask you what is some of the most valuable, Brian, what is some of the most valuable advice or lesson that you received at Purchase? Because one of the questions I have also is how did you go from environmental sciences to this space? And Ooh. I'm sure that's a long story, but maybe to just, um, if there's a way to, to connect that into something that either inspired you at Purchase or something that ultimately led you down a different path? The thing that I found most valuable at Purchase was that it taught me that I can learn whatever I need to do. And there is nothing that I can't do. Um, but I, I love being at Purchase. I, I had a great time there. And I can give you the thumbnail sketch. I started off in environmental science. And while I was doing that, doing my research, I also uh, learned uh, computer programming. And so when I got out of purchase, I wound up going into that field. And then from that to management consulting, which, and as I was progressing, I was also being able to do things that again, people told me I shouldn't be able to do. And then from that, as I got kind of burnt out in the, uh, in the corporate world and, and, and the technical end, and then I said, look, I wanna share what I've learned with other people. And that's kind of the thumbnail sketch of how I wound up here where I am today. And, uh, so purchase again taught me that I can learn whatever I need to learn. And that education, again, when you graduate, it's called commencement people, right? That means the beginning, not the end. And so really your education really starts uh, after you get out of school. And I try to learn from everything, everyone. I learn from things that work, things that don't work. I'm just always looking to see how can I grow and improve and, and how can I fine tune? And I think uh, everybody can do that. And it's so it's really so easy to do. 
And again, some of us get into bad habits. We're not, unfortunately, we're not taught this when we go to school. Uh, if you were, it's very fortunate. I, I kind of discovered it on my own. But if you realize that even if your thinking tends to be negative, you can change that in a second. So I'm not going to think that way anymore. That's a cool thing about your own thoughts. They're yours. And you can change them. And if you don't like the thoughts you're having, just improve them. And remember, don't tell yourself you can't or you won't. Because if you do that, then then you're, you're shackling yourself to a, a giant immovable stone and and you can, you can release yourself in a second, but as long as you say, I can't and I won't, uh, you limit your forward progress. Excellent. Um, is, uh, is anyone else, uh, I think, does anyone else have anything they'd like to offer or think about or share? Um, I think I'm going to say one other thing, and I hope it's okay. And then Adish, I'm going to turn it over to you and Michelle and some other people kind of sparked this in my my thinking that we're talking about the motivation and we're talking about I, I one thing that I do that may or may not work for you that I've read about is to put to almost as an acting exercise put but not as an acting exercise for real, for real, to put yourself to, if when we get into a space where the positive energy is there for about a minute and a half and you're really sitting in it, it's long enough for the energy to, to move into the next space. And the other thing is that sleep is a wonderful clearing space. So if we're carrying something kind of icky with us, maybe it's a great time if you can, take a nap or just say, all right, tonight when it's bedtime, this is all going away. And in the morning I can start fresh and clean. It's like, it's like a, just a clear slate. So it's simple, but I just wanted to throw that out there as a, as a, as a, as a, as a thought as we go into the night, at least. Well, so. That's a great, that's a great thought. That really is excellent. Uh, and just reminded me of another way that I visualize things. Imagine all the negative thoughts you have, the negative, just garbage that builds up in your mind. Imagine sitting on top of a trap door and the trap door opens and it just falls away into oblivion. And if you can visualize that and really feel how good it's gonna to feel to get rid of that extra baggage, uh, it, it's, it's a great relief. And you mentioned sleep. And one of the things that interferes with people's sleep is they're always fretting about things. And when you're worrying, and when you've got that, your mind will not let you sleep. I mean, eventually you pass out from exhaustion, but that's not really as healthy a sleep as it could be. So that, that, that's a great point, Roxana. Thank you. Okay. Um, Brian, thank you so much. And Roxana, this was absolutely a perfect event for our audience. Um, Brian, you brought home a lot of um, things for people to think about. Uh, I know I certainly learned quite a few new things. And I really love the... Um, the whole waking up in the morning and just thinking very positively and being grateful. I thought that was really one of your best points uh, to remember. But um, so thank you for participating on alum with an alum during alumni weekend, uh, giving up your time, your gift of time for us. And thank you to everyone who attended this program. And I hope that you know you enjoyed it. Um, we have another program that just started. So unfortunately, I need to get to the next item. Let, let me just um, leave have... everyone with just one thought. First of all, thank you for having me speak here today. Uh, I, I love Purchase. I love being connected to Purchase. So I really appreciate it. And, and to me, this, this, is, this is my passion. So I love doing this. And uh, if anyone's interested, if you check out my website, uh, you'll find a link if you want to. Uh, Shoot me an email. You have any questions, follow-ups, anything I can help you with, uh, if you want to bounce off of me, uh, feel free to do that. And uh, this is being posted on the Purchase uh, YouTube. I know there was something in the comments I wasn't able It'll to. It'll be on the Purchase Alumni Association YouTube channel next week. We'll how do people, how do people find that? How do they get Well, to we have the participants, and we will be sending out a, a global thank you to everyone who attended alumni weekend and and we will include the the link to the youtube channel where we will post all the programs and events and right. i hope and i believe uh, roxana had also 
put your link in the chat as well for, for those who would like to reach out to you directly on your website. Great. Thank um, you. We can get to so you on the website. I'm sorry? I'm sorry? We can get to you uh, through the website. Yes, dare to live without limits .com. Right. Got it. Yep, all the connections are there for you. You get to Facebook, YouTube, email me directly, any anything that works. You can yeah, you can even send me a regular letter. <laughs> if anyone so I encourage that. everyone to take a look at the alumni website for tomorrow's programs. We have um, NSS uh, student showcase. Jody Long of the class of 76 will be performing. We also have uh, um, Tyson Pugh from class of 91 who will be talking about medievalism, Monty Python and the queer legends of King Arthur, which is uh, promises to be a very interesting program. And then Friday night, we have reunion. Um, please, everyone come and celebrate. It's open to all alumni, followed by a, a drag bingo, which is also open to everyone with the showcase. And then on Saturday, we have our traditional picnic, but it's virtual this year. And before that, we have um, our new president, Millie Pena, Dr. Millie Pena. We'll have a keynote um, presentation, which is the inaugural keynote, president's keynote this year. And she's talking about the role of ideas in social movement, followed by the all alumni picnic. And that will wrap up uh, alumni weekend, which is a whole week of activities. So thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, can't tell you to get home safe because you are already there. Home. <laughs> And Brian and Roxana, thank you again. Very good. For a great program. And, and thank you, Roxana. Bye -bye. I appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Bye, thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thanks again. I appreciate oh, everything. Gosh.